News of the Times, Murderous Mondays, Terrible Thomas Simmons. Welcome to News of the Times. In today's episode, it is 1807 in Hoddleston, Hertfordshire. Young Thomas Simmons has become impassioned by older maid Elizabeth Betsy Harris. Betsy has been advised by her employer that she should not accept Thomas's advances due mostly to his volatile temper. Thomas is indeed very upset once his rejection is confirmed from Betsy. His accompanying scene encourages the Borums, in whose house he has been working, to release him. Thomas is made to go. Thomas's reaction to the rejection and the dismissal is the scene of the bloodbath that takes place. It is with lucky escapes of his intended victims that he did not become a serial killer. We take a look at the life and murders of terrible Thomas Simmons in today's episode of Murderous Mondays. We hope you enjoy the show. Mr and Mrs Borum, important figures in Hoddleston's Quaker community, were enjoying a familial gathering on the 20th of October 1807. Their daughter, Esther, sometimes referred to as Hester, had come for a visit to her parents. She was the wife of prominent philanthropist John Warner. She was pregnant with her fourth child. The merry family gathering included Mr. and Mrs. Borum. Mr. Borum was frail, suffering from palsy. Their visiting daughter, Esther Warner, the three younger daughters, Anne, Elizabeth and Sarah, and a family friend who had been invited, Mrs. Hummerston. Their servant, Elizabeth Betsy Harris, was also included within the household. Recent events had unfolded within the Borum household involving the dismissal of a young servant named Thomas Simmons. Thomas, it seemed, had exhibited a propensity for violence, prompting the Borums to sever his employment ties. A subplot in this domestic narrative emerged from Thomas's courtship of a fellow servant, Elizabeth, commonly addressed as Betsy Harris. Mrs. Borum, it seems, out of genuine concern for Elizabeth's well-being, had cautioned her about Thomas. Swayed by her employer's arguments, Elizabeth rejected Thomas. He did not take it well. From the Hampshire Chronicle, the 26th of October, 1807, Murders at Hoddeston. The following is a more accurate narrative than has yet appeared the above most extraordinary murders as detailed before the coroner on Wednesday. The examination continued from 11 in the morning till 8 in the evening. The principal witness was Elizabeth Harris, the servant maid. Mr. Borum, a respectable member of the Society of Friends, had been many years a resident at Hoddeston. His house is on the... the declivity of the hill beyond that town about 200 yards from the market house. He had four daughters, one of whom was wife of Mr. Warner, brass founder of the Crescent Kingslade Road and also the Crescent Dewin Street. Mrs. Warner had been on a visit to her parents for several days and on Tuesday evening a Mrs. Hummerston was at Mr. Borum's house, in consequence of an invitation to spend the evening with the family. The company assembled in the parlour were Mr. Borum, a very old gentleman affected by the palsy, his wife, his four daughters, Anne, Elizabeth and Sarah and Mrs. Warner. At about quarter to nine they were alarmed by a very loud noise at the back of the house, proceeded from some person in dispute with the servant maid Elizabeth Harris, and who was insisting to get into the house. He proved 
to be Thomas Simmons, a young man aged about 20, who had been servant in the family of Mr. Borum for about two years last, but from which he had been very recently dismissed, and he was employed by the brewery at Mr. Messrs. Christie and Co. at Hoddleston. This young man, it seems, had, while in the family, paid his addresses to the servant Elizabeth Harris, who was many years older himself. But the symptoms of a ferocious and ungovernable temper, which he had frequently displayed, had induced his mistress to dissuade the woman from any connection with him, and this violent disposition had led also to his dismissal from the family. He had been heard to vow vengeance against Elizabeth Harris and the elderly Mrs. Borum, and Tuesday night, at the hour already stated, he made his way into the farmyard and from thence into an interior court called the Stone Yard. Elizabeth Harris, seeing his approach, retired within a scullery and shut the door against him. He demanded admittance, which she refused. High words according arose, and he plunged his hand, armed with a knife, through a window lattice at her, but missed his aim. This noise alarmed the company in the parlour, or keeping room as it was called. Mrs. Hummerston was the first to come forth, in hope of being able to intimidate and send away the disturber. But just as she had reached the back door leading from the parlour to the stone yard, Simmons, who was proceeding to enter the house that way, met her and with his knife stabbed her in the jugular artery and pulling the knife forward laid open her throat on the left side. She ran forward, as is supposed, for the purpose of alarming the neighbourhood, but fell and rose no more. The murderer pursued his sanguinary purpose and rushed into the parlour, raised and brandished his bloody knife, swearing a dreadful oath that he would give it to them all. Mrs. Warner was the person next to him, and without giving her time to rise from the chair, gave her so many stabs in the jugular vein and about her neck and breast that she fell from her chair covered with streams of blood, and expired. Fortunately, Miss Anne Borum had been upstairs immediately previous to the commencement of this horrid business, and her sisters, Elizabeth and Sarah, terrified of the horrors they saw, ran upstairs too for safety. The villain next attacked the aged Mrs. Borum by a similar aim at her jugular artery, but missed the point and wounded her deep in the neck, though not mortally. The poor old gentleman was waking his way toward the kitchen when the servant maid was, and the miscreant in endeavouring to reach the same place overset him and then endeavoured to stab the maid in the throat. She struggled with him, caught the knife and was severely wounded in the hand and arm. The knife fell in the struggle. She, however, got out at the back door and made her way into the street when, by her screams of murder, she alarmed the neighbourhood. The poor people residing near the house were all in their beds, but the whole town was soon in an alarm. The murderer sought to conceal himself, but after some search was discovered in a cow crib. He was immediately made prisoner and brought to the Bell Alehouse, where he was bound and handcuffed till the next morning, and was actually at the point of death from the tightness of his ligatures, which had nearly stopped the circulation, when Mr. Fairfax of the Black Bull Inn in the town interfered, cut the ligatures, and thereby prevented a death too summary for the cause of public justice. It appeared also from the affirmation of Mr. Simpson, a friend of Mr. Borum, who, 
on account of the old age and feebleness of the latter, had, for some time past, superintended his farming affairs, and he had frequently rebuked the murderer Simmons for his idleness and negligence, and that Simmons had declared he would take away his life and would gladly be hanged for him. Many other instances the furious and sanguinary disposition of the miscreant were adduced, and in particular that he had vowed to murder Miss Anne Borum and Elizabeth Harris. Two prior attempts at house robbery. Two attempts have been made in the course of the winter to break open and rob the house of Mr. Borum, which led to a suspicion that Simmons was connected with a gang of accomplices. But when he was brought before the coroner's jury covered with blood and closely interrogated, he denied all connection with accomplices, expressed sorrow for what he had done, and said that he had no previous intention to murder Mrs. Hummerston or any of Mr. Borum's family, his sole design was against Elizabeth Harris. He was committed to Hartford Jail to abide his trial, and yesterday, on being interrogated by the clergyman of the place, he persisted in denying his previous intention to murder Mrs. Hummerston or any of Mr. Borum's family. But he said that after he had stabbed those whom he had murdered and was in pursuit of Elizabeth Harris, he heard something, as it were, flutter behind him and follow him in his pursuit, and when he overtook her, he felt himself unable to strike as he intended, and the knife fell from his hand. The dead bodies remain at Mr. Borum's until the day of internment. Visiting guest of the family, Mrs. Hummerston, is quite dead from the attack upon her. The Borum's pregnant visiting daughter, Mrs. Warner, was brutally slashed and is also dead. Elderly Mrs. Borum remains frail after the deep wound in her neck that was inflicted upon her. Elizabeth Harris, the maid, and one of the stated intended victims of Thomas suffered severe cutting to her hands as she fought Thomas off. The other intended victim, Miss Anne Borum, who had also advised the maid to reject Thomas's advances, escaped harm. Feelings are running very high within the community, and without police protection, it is possible Thomas's fate would have been decided for him by public opinion. The case goes to trial. Unusually, although the murder of both women is not in question, Thomas only goes to trial for Mrs. Hummerston. The Borums, being strict Quakers, refused to give evidence at the trial, even with the victim, Mrs. Warner, being their daughter. From the Berry and Norwich Post on the 9th of March, 1808, trial of Simmons for murder. At Hartford Assizes on Friday, before Mr. Justice Heath, Thomas Simmons was indicted for that he at Broxbourne in that county on the 20th of October last did make an assault on Sarah Hummerston and willfully gave her a mortal wound in the neck with a knife of which she instantly died. This is the case of the inhuman wretch who murdered the two unfortunate women at Hoddleston and the court was crowded at an early hour in the morning to hear the trial. It did not last long, as the facts lay in a very narrow compass. Mr. Pooley, as counsel for the prosecution, stated to the jury that it was not possible but they must have heard of the case. He entreated them to dismiss from their minds all they had heard elsewhere, and attend only to the evidence which would be laid before them. He then stated the facts as below detailed and called the following witnesses. Samuel James, a surgeon at Hoddleston, deposed that on the 20th of October he went to the house of Mr. Borum 
at Hoddleston, and on going to the house he saw Mrs. Hummerston leaning against the paling near the door. She was then alive, but died in three minutes after of a wound in the neck near the spine. Elizabeth Harris, servant of Mr. Borum, said she had lived four years with the Borum household. Simmons, the prisoner, had lived there three years and quitted it last Michaelmas. The prisoner wished to marry her, but her mistress disapproved of it. They had quarrelled before he quitted the service, on which occasion he beat her, and when he had done, he said he did not care if he had killed her. He had often said he would make away with her because she would not marry him. The Event At about half-past eight in the evening of the 20th of October, he came to the house. She was in the kitchen and heard him coming along the yard. He was swearing violently. He came up to the window and struck at her through the lattice, and swore would do for them all. She desired him not to make a noise as they had company. He said he did not care for the company. He would do for them all. Mrs. Hummerston, hearing the noise, opened the room door and came to the yard. She told him to go away. He gave her a blow on the head, which knocked off her bonnet. She ran into the house, and he immediately followed her. The witness, Elizabeth Harris, immediately heard the shrieks of murder, but did not know from whom. All the family were in the room. Mrs. Borum's daughters, the three young ladies, Mrs. Warner, the married daughter, Mr. Borum and his wife, and Mrs. Hummerston. In a very short time, the prisoner came to the wash house to her, Elizabeth Harris. She shut the door and cried out murder. Miss Harris then ran into the sitting room. She there saw someone lying under the window. She ran from thence down a passage. The prisoner, Thomas Simmons, followed her. She there met her master with the poker in his hand in running hastily. Her master, Mr. Borum, who is a very old and feeble man, was knocked down. The prisoner caught her and threw her down and drew a knife on her. He threw her across Mrs. Warner, who was lying dead, as she believed. He drew a knife across her throat, but she guarded it with her hand, which was cut. He made a second blow when she wrestled the knife out of his hand. He immediately ran away, and she saw no more of him. Sarah Cakebury, witness, said she lived near Mr. Borum and heard the cry of murder. She passed Mrs. Hummerston and went into the house. She saw Mrs. Warner lying dead under the window. George Ninnan, witness, said on the evening of the 20th of October he went to Mr. Borum's at Hoddleston. Finding what had been done, he went in search of the murderer. In the cow house he found Thomas Simmons's hat. He went in and a further search, but the prisoner was found by another party. Thomas Copperwheat, witness, disposed. He went in search of the murderer. He discovered Simmons concealed under some straw in a crib in the farmyard. He had on him a smock frock, very bloody. The place where he was found was about a hundred yards from the house. Benjamin Rook, coroner said, when the evidence of Harris was read to the prisoner, he said it was very true he had murdered them, and no one else, he added, that he did not intend to have murdered Mrs. Hummerston, but he went with the intention of murdering Mrs. Borum, Mrs. Warner, and Harris, the maidservant. The constable who carried him to prison deposed to the same effect. The prisoner also told him that when he had got Betsy down, he heard something fluttering over his shoulders, which made him get up and run away. The prisoner, being called upon to know if he had anything to say, answered in a careless tone, No. Chapter 1
Mr Justice Heath told the jury the case was so very clear that it must be unnecessary for him to address any observations to them. The prisoner, as they had heard, had more than once voluntarily confessed his guilt. The jury found him guilty, and the learned judge immediately pronounced the sentence of the law that he should be hanged on Monday next, and his body anatomatized. It is a matter of curiosity to inquire what are the features of which mark a wretch of such abandoned principles. The monster is about the middle size, strong-featured, and a good-looking rustic. The pictures published of him in town do not by any means convey a correct idea of his person. The general outline and character of his face is best represented by the front-face portrait of him, but he is not so old as there represented, nor had he that yellow, cadaverous appearance. On the contrary, he has a very young look and a good countenance, being rather a well-looking young man than otherwise. Thomas Simmons heard the sentence of death with great indifference and walked very coolly from the bar. The young girl, the maid Elizabeth Harris, whom he attempted to murder, was in great agitation and was obliged to be supported while she was in court. Although there was one report that stated that Thomas Simmons had committed suicide in jail, that news report was incorrect. Thomas Simmons was executed by hanging on the 7th of March with his dead body handed to doctors for anamatization. Postscript. John Warner, also a committed Quaker, had little comment on the horrific slaying his wife had endured. A few years later he married his dead wife's sister, Sarah Borum. They were married for forty years and had eleven children, in addition to the three children from his slain wife, Esther. That concludes this episode of Murderous Mondays, Terrible Thomas Simmons. We very much hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy the show, we will be grateful if you could like or subscribe to our little channel. We upload five days a week. Mondays are murderous as we delve into the dark side of Regency and Victorian crime. Wednesdays are wicked, where we pull together stories with a similar theme, such as Doctors of Death. Fridays are frightful, where we look at crimes in a location, such as stories from the stage to murder and scandal in the aristocracy. Saturdays is Serial Killer Saturdays, where we investigate serial killer stories from the past. And Sundays is a bit of fun with a unique mini murder mystery where you, the listener, have a chance to solve a murderous riddle. On the last Sunday of the month, we offer a two-hour compilation of stories based around a theme. Thank you again for watching and listening. This has been News of the Times, and I am Robin Coles.